Oh my god. What a disaster. What a nightmare. Oh my god. Welcome on in everybody. I know you don't want to be here. I don't know um, I don't know how you make a worse night in um in just singular night. Just don't put stakes on it. Don't put you know game or season stakes on it. Just just a pure night terror of a football game that you had to watch where your rival, which you don't even feel like you have the right to call them that, your your you know, your superior, your divisional superior comes in basically just showed up. You you basically gave him the game on a silver platter right away. They whoop your ass. You make every mistake possible. And then on top of it, just to put a absolute detonator on the night to make it unbelievably worse, your quarterback with a concussion passed who talked all season about losing weight adding mobility, decides to run for a first down and doesn't slide, gets the first down, and immediately we all saw what happened and that his head got kinked up as soon as he runs into DeMar Hamlin. And we all saw the all-too-familiar look of, you know, the arm going straight, the fingers going crooked all the things that we saw the last time that happened it's not even something you feel like you should see multiple times on a player and they go to commercial break the only thing that gives you a little bit of relief is to see at least he's walking off under his own power but to a tongue of Iloa once again uh dealing with a concussion and I think has a lot of fair questions brought up about his football future and what's going to happen and all that type of stuff. And, you know, it's, uh, it's an absolute nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare to see what the hell went down on that football field today at hard rock stadium, which doesn't really seem to be shaking the curse allegations that have surrounded this team. And it feels like it, it is crazy, but not to say it feels like the Dolphin season is already up in smoke because you don't know. You don't know when the quarterback is coming back. You don't know if he's going to be able to play, if that's the, the right decision. I'm doing this, you know, before or I'm not listening to Mike McDaniel or post game. I already sat in silence long enough watching Kirk Herbstreit and Al Michaels call the longest fourth quarter of my life where they're listing off 1997 Marlins. But look, it it was yeah, it was unbe- like we it was unbelievably t- cuz the night was already going like horrible. You know, and this is the the what the second drive, second time the Dolphins had the football. You're down 14 points. You have this just awful moment where Tua throws what could only be described as the worst interception you'll ever see in your life. I don't know what the hell he was doing. Uh, the Dolphins at that time did have two backup offensive linemen in because. Lester Cotton got hurt. Uh, Robert Jones got hurt. Excuse me. Lester Cotton went in for him with a shoulder injury. And then Teron Armstead was out because apparently he's like 
a medieval knight that they have to re put together his harness so that he can go play football. So Kendall Lamb's in there for a play and the Bills front lines all over to a and he just throws up like this just awful pass. And you're thinking to yourself, well, this has gone to an absolute mockery of a game. You go down 31 to 10 and you think it's not going to get worse. And then the Dolphins kind of move the ball down the field. You know, a little bit of a damage is done drive because the game's out of reach. You're down three touchdowns. Doesn't really feel like you have a prayer in hell. And just, you know, you want to say the unthinkable happened, but I guess it's not the unthinkable because, yeah, this was the danger in in Pantoa. And look, I'm a guy... I say full on, like I wanted to to get his extension. I root for the guy. I, you know, think he's a good quarterback. But the durability questions, he seemed to answer him last year. But, you know, this was a different type of hit, but the same type of hit because it was always to a falling backwards, taking these role. You know, that's why he took the jujitsu and all that. And this one. Because he slimmed down and he made it to this point where he wanted to make himself a little bit more mobile, goes and doesn't slide after getting the first down and delivers a blow and, and he can't take the blow. You know, that that back of the head thing has been a, a, a vulnerability spot for him. So, you know, I don't really know where the franchise goes from here with him. Um because I don't, you, you don't know the severity of it. You don't know what the grade is on this because it's not as bad as what happened in Cincinnati, right? Because he wasn't stretchered off the field, but we saw what happened to the way his body reacted, and it didn't look right. Amazon didn't play it again for a reason, and this is now what four four concussions. So I don't know. I don't know. I know a lot of people are talking about what quarterback to go. Or I mean, I think there's another time for that, another place for that. You know, first of all, you do want him to uh, to be okay. Obviously, um, you can't take off the table that he'll play again because he has played again after that. But I do think there, you know, for a guy who's had talks about his NFL future before from his family. And they said they reported on afterwards that full use of his ligaments. He was conscious. He was with his family in the locker room. There was at one point they said that Teron Armstead went and hugged to his brother who was outside the locker room. Was Teron Armstead also went down and, um, yeah, you just, you, you know, it's, it's just an, it, it was an absolute nightmare of a night. It was, it, it just, it, when you thought it couldn't get worse just based on performance, then there on top of it, you have to uh, suffering another brutal, brutal concussion. Um, so, you know, and for the line, look, I just wanted to come on here and talk about like the dolphins completely going out there and, and, and themselves like that really, sh- you know, in in the world of what this game was supposed to be, which was a game in your building, prime time, division opponent, team that's had your number, are you going to do anything different about it? Are you going to be ready for it? And the answer was no. Not 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 even a little bit, not by any measure at all. At all. And the game uh started off in poor fashion where, you know, outside of Devon Achan, I don't know who you want to say had a good game tonight. You know, he he looked good. Everybody else, pff, kick rocks. Um, You know, the first drive, the Dolphins have the ball. Tua throws it right to Grant DeBose, who is, uh, you know, basically the last receiver that they have and bounces right off of him, gets picked off. What happens? Bills in Dolphins real estate 
they end up getting Josh Allen to James Cook for a touchdown. You're like, all right, that's not great. Now, the only time you felt like the Dolphins were going to have any kind of growth in this is the next drive after because they march all the way down the field. Tua was able to find Devon Achan for a touchdown. They tie it up. It's even. You're like, hey, pretty damn good. Like this is this is this is looking and the Dolphins had one drive to really shift this game on momentum because the Bills get the ball back. Josh Allen had a, that fumble on his stupid glove and they get the ball back and Tua throws he airmails a ball to Robbie Chosen who you know slipped a little bit but you know it wasn't it wasn't that that pristine so Tua on when he was throwing to guys, and it's not like your star receivers had great games either, but when he was trying to throw to these guys who are not uh, boned up on the offense, it just kept it. One was completely on the receiver. This one, you got to put on QB1. Um, but yeah, you could just see the thin margins of the roster immediately are coming to, coming to get you. And the mistakes start getting to you. And then the Bills... Take that. They turn it into 10 points. They go and get a field goal. Dolphins get the ball back. And Jalen Wright gets his uh, little debut. And then, like, immediately, immediately, you have a situation where, like, all right, Jalen Wright's looking good. Teron Armstead, holding call, moves it back. Tua had a pretty sick-ass shovel pass to Jonu Smith. But, you know. He, he got an incomplete to Tyree Kill. Looked like he might have been held. Who gives a rat's ass? Dolphins got killed. And you just think to yourself, like, they they already look so unready for prime time. And this is taking the awful concussion thing out of it. If I just my thoughts going into this, like, man, once again, the quarterback, the team, the coach. Every time they get on the national stage, they embarrass themselves again and again and again. Every single time they got the country watching them. This is your chance to show that you're not frauds. And what they do is they not only show that they are frauds, but it's like they add another new wrinkle to it to show how fraudulent they are. And it's tough because you work yourself up. You get excited, you know, and you look a fool because we had fun, baby. What, what, what? That's the thing. You know, the, the Dolphins, they're not prime time. You know, they're like a soap opera. They're, they're daytime, in the middle of the day, empty calories. Storyline doesn't really make sense, but it always ends with a big bang. But they're not, they're not an Emmy winner. They're not Game of Thrones. They're not the Sopranos. You know, that's, that's just, this is what they are. Every time that they got the country watching, it ends in in just an embarrassment. And then you have that drive, punt away, and the Bills come back after that. And you have Josh Allen, who, you know, you look at the two dichotomies of these quarterbacks, and you have, like, Josh Allen, third and 12, rolling out, Piss whistle down the field to Ty Johnson over Jalen Ramsey, who I have seen nothing but get cooked and bounce off of uh, people he's trying to tackle since signing his extension. And it goes right down to the one-yard line. James Cook, he walks in. Boom. There's that. Next drive. Uh, You know, A-Chan, again, only one move in the rock. They get to a third and one. Alec Ingold, they try to go to him again. Stuffed. Front line was killing the Dolphins the entire game, when especially when it was in passing situations. But definitely, uh, and then the next play, I mean, Ed Oliver just completely destroyed Robert Jones. And I don't know if that's something that he got hurt on or what, but Tua got sacked, and you're just like, Jesus, what, what kind of a disgrace performance is this? What is this? Only to get followed up with James Cook just taking it to the – just, just, just one touch, boom, takes it to the mother house. And it went from a disaster to a disgrace. Like, right at that point, you're just like, this is the performance you guys brought? Like, this, 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 with everything on the line, everything on the line, this is what you brought to the table. 
with your with your with your rival with your with your with your father coming into town they had to travel short week you guys were home and it, and and not only was it not close but any time that you kind of looked like hey the dolphins are going to the, the the whisker moments were like hey the dolphins can hang here the dolphins look like they're moving a little bit some epic failure just to take it away and this this Sean McDermott we always talk about Josh Allen but this Sean McDermott he might as well put Mike McDaniel on a high chair and say here comes the airplane like it, it is ridiculous how much he doesn't fall for this nonsense he don't care doesn't matter they lost their linebacker in the middle doesn't matter didn't have the nickel corner doesn't matter they got those dogs up front same story every damn time so I, you know, I don't know what the halftime speech was this time around. I tweeted it out. It should have been Stephen Ross asking for refunds. But, yeah. And the unfortunate thing about it is, you know, like, you wish that it could just be on the football, but it's worse than that, you know? It's uh, because now it's like, oh, f- if two is done, like, you know, the things that I'm getting texted, I'm like, let's go get Tannehill. Let's go get Tom Brady. Let's go get uh, whoever, I guess, Mr. Unlimited from Pittsburgh. Who? It doesn't matter, dude. So, look, I mean, listen, victory lap for the skeptics tonight. Um, you guys uh, are looking mad right. No no bitterness from me. Um, and you just hope that two is all right, man. You hope that he's. Uh, you hope that he's all right. You hope that the uh, the guy is gonna have all his health about him. I do enjoy watching him play. I do find him to be a very uh, easy guy to root for. It was a cool story, you know. It was cool seeing him feel like he kind of made it, and now it kind of just feels like he's living this nightmare all over again. Let's just hope that he's all right. Let's just hope that he's all right. This was a. Uh, just a tire fire of a night one that needs to be exercised it feels like like it feels like football demons are are taking over awful Eesh.